Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. We've got a good topic today, a follow-up from a previous post, so let's go. <laughs> What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Part 2. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Okay. This is going to be horrible, but also kind of hilarious, fair warning. I was briefly but severely addicted to heroin for about 9 months, clean and sober now for 18 years, but the 9 months I spent as a desperately strung out IV heroin user were bleak as hell. About month 7, my boyfriend and I decided to try and quit cold turkey. With typically brilliant junkie logic, we decided we'd take a road trip to Seattle for a week or so, thus removing the temptation to call our dealer. We got to Seattle and checked into a cheap motel, spent a day with awful withdrawals. More junkie logic soon followed. We can't do heroin, but hey, let's try some meth. That will distract us from the dope sickness and might be fun at the same time. Boyfriend had some old connections in Seattle. He called. We met up with this guy at a gas station parking lot, got a bag of meth, got a pipe, back to the motel where we smoked meth, shagged, and stayed awake for three days straight. On day three, we figured out that being high on meth doesn't work as a cure for heroin withdrawal. We were now horribly dope sick and strung out on speed. So, we went walking downtown and found a heroin dealer, got some, got well, went back to the motel, and that is when I started to lose my mind, literally. I began making weird throat-clearing rumbly sounds. Boyfriend, what are you doing? Me. I don't know. <coughs> no, I can't control it. And then the weirdest thing happened. The throat clearing sounds evolving into me yelling things loudly in an English accent. Think psychotic basal faulty. I began bellowing things like, Pardon me, madam, but I have clearly gone insane and cannot stop yelling. Fucking hell, why am I yelling in an English accent? This is bollocks. Unsurprisingly, other guests complained about the very weird noise and we had to leave the motel. We walked outside to my car and suddenly in a split second, I shot backwards out of my body, and my viewpoint was about a hundred feet above the sidewalk. I was hovering in the air, and I could the top of my own head, and my boyfriend's next to me. I could see the roof of the motel we just left, the tar paper, the litter, the AC fans, as clearly as I've ever seen anything in my life. I was not in my body anymore. There was a moment of pure calm and stillness, and a beautiful, strange voice somewhere near me said, You're dying. Your mother is going to be very sad. You need to decide whether to die now or save yourself. I watched as the typical physical me, far below, stumbled and fell onto the sidewalk. I saw my boyfriend freaking out and trying to wake me up. Then, bam, I was in my body, my eyes fluttering. I was whimpering with terror, totally confused as my boyfriend yelled, wake up, and shook me. The next thing I remember is being held down on an exam table in an emergency room somewhere in Seattle. My boyfriend was crying, and laying half on top of me holding my arms, I was struggling and yelling. Someone injected me with something, everything went blank. Back to consciousness, and we're sitting in another parking lot, in the car. My boyfriend is explaining, as I flick in and out of consciousness, that he'd taken me to an ER and told him I was having meth psychosis. They'd given me a shot of something relaxing, and told him I'd been on the verge of a heart attack or stroke, and that I needed sleep more than anything else. So he'd found another motel. I was back in my body, but still doing the loud British yelling thing. When we went to the front desk, I remember bellowing something like, Greetings, my good man. Now then, we would be grateful to hire one of your lovely rooms. If you'd be so kind as to give us our key, governor, we shall be on our way. I suppose it's a testament to the weird things motel clerks see on the regular, but this guy didn't bat an eyelash. Just handed over the key once boyfriend paid for the room, and that was that. I slept for about 16 hours. When I woke up, the English accent and yelling things were gone. I was weak, shaky, and horrified at myself. We went back home. I got clean, boyfriend didn't, and now 18 years later I'm clean and sober, and I live, drumroll please, in England. I'm married to an English guy who says my attempts at the accent are awful. I can't argue. So I usually don't comment on the first story, but it was long enough where you can see my face again. I'm sorry for the British accent. You know, I tried my best, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Otherwise, have you ever had something like that where you started yelling or speaking in another language? I've heard stories about that. Pretty crazy. 
I almost drowned from overestimating my swimming ability. I was having a beach day at the lake and it was pretty windy. One of our tubes got sent into the water and the wind was pushing across the lake. I thought I'll just go swim out to it and float it back. I started swimming towards it and realized it wasn't gaining any ground on it. I decided I was just going to swim as hard as I could so I could catch up. I realized I wasn't fast enough and I was getting tired so I needed to turn around. When I look back, I'm almost halfway across the lake and exhausted. I had to make a split decision to either swim back towards the shore I came from or try and make it to the rest of the way across. I decided to try and swim across the rest of the lake while completely exhausted. I made it about three quarters of the way and realized I was too tired to keep going. I couldn't scream because nobody would have been able to save me in time and I realized I might actually die here. I decided to try my hardest to float on my back and just let the waves and wind take me as far as I could go. I don't know how long I floated, but I eventually was able to touch the bottom and it was the best feeling I've ever had in my life. I had to lie down because my legs were so tired, I couldn't walk, and I was so exhausted I was puking non-stop. I finally made it back around the lake after a couple of hours, and everyone on the other side had no idea how much trouble I was having in the water. They weren't even paying attention to me. After this experience, I no longer will underestimate the power of water. Maybe not the scariest story, but one I thought of right away. When I was nine years old, my best friend at the time spent the night. We stayed up playing video games in the living room, but eventually got tired and turned them off to go to sleep. We both just slept on the couches in the living room. He fell asleep right away, but it always took me a while to fall asleep. Laying there, I thought I heard something outside. It sounded like someone walking up our driveway. I laid there for a second, wondering who it could be this late at night. I went to look out the kitchen window, which had no curtain or blinds, just a clear view out. Then I heard someone climbing onto our central air unit, which was right under our kitchen window. I ran back into the living room and ducked down. A man put his face against the glass and was looking into our kitchen window. He was looking in for probably 10 seconds, but it felt like time stopped. I was frozen in terror. I couldn't even move. I just stayed ducked down until I heard him jump down and run off. Then I ran into my mom's room and woke her up. On New Year's Eve 1998, me, my sister, and my niece, all between 9 and 12, stayed in my Nana's enormous 1700s manor house, which we always knew as the farmhouse. So we're playing video games and watching VHS while the adults all drank and partied in the pub. My Nana also owned the pub, which was located on the other side of the farmyard. So we kids played for a while, and around 11-ish, we decided to go get some more videos to watch. The room is next to the large living room we were in, but... You have to go through the kitchen into the old servants' quarters to access this room. So we went to the room where my uncle had a huge collection. It was sort of his man cave with all his stuff from games, videos, weights, and the gun cabinets. I tried to open the door, but it was jammed. I thought this was strange as the doors never locked. So I went up to the pub and found my ma'am and asked her for help. So we wander back down to the house. She tries the door and nothing. She says your uncle must have a lock on it or something. So she goes back to the pub to ask my uncle why the door is locked. And while she does that, I go into the living room behind the big TV and change the cables on the back of the TV so we can play games while the adults sort this out. So I'm behind the TV messing with cables. My ma'am has come back into the house after being told there is no lock on the door. So she holds the handle and shoulder barges the door. It moves a little bit and it's obviously something being blocked. So she keeps at it. I hear bang, 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 as she's slowly getting this door open. And then I hear the words which haunted me for years. Everyone out, now. It was a tone in which you know something is very wrong. And I immediately start to run out of the living room into the kitchen and into the servant's hallway toward the front door. As I enter the hall and look right into the room, the door is half open and the gun cabinet's doors are wide open. The wind is rushing from the front door straight through the hall and out the open window in the gun room. My whole body and mind went into a panic. I knew instantly what was happening. I sprinted as fast as I could toward the pub. My mother was ahead and she screamed into the pub what she'd seen. The whole pub emptying in an instant hoping to catch whoever had done it. That was the night that all the guns got stolen from the farmhouse while three kids sat in the room next door totally unaware. I had nightmares of that room for a long time afterwards. The police investigation said that they had distributed because they left some equipment they used to get in and some ammo and other things. So basically, the first time I tried the door, 
They were inside the room. I was held up at gunpoint a few years ago and came pretty close to getting shot in the face. The story. I used to be a store manager at a Del Taco in Pasadena. Every afternoon, I'd go to the bank deposit to the bank across the street from my store. Had been doing it for years without issue. This time was no different. I crossed the parking lot and got into my car, sat down and took out my phone. Was probably browsing Reddit or replying to a text. I can't remember exactly what now. When my car door was suddenly open. Some bald dude was standing outside my door. He says, hey man, I need to talk to you. He's glancing around nervously. I was kind of young and naive at that point and was like, oh, hey, what's up? I legit thought it was a customer or a coworker's son wanting to chat. The guy looks around nervously, pulls out a gun and points it at me and says, give me the money. I know you have the money. At this point, I sort of went numb and my brain started processing a thousand thoughts a minute. I thought to myself, shit, I saw his face. Even if I give him the money, he'll probably shoot me. Shit. Something compelled me to lie. So I say, hey man, sorry, I don't have any money. I have my wallet. Do you want that? The guy is visibly confused. What? I know you have the deposit money. Give me the money. I keep up my lie. I don't have anything. I swear I, I don't have any money. The guy appears confused, lowers the gun, and in that moment, my fight or flight kicked in. I make a grab for the gun. The next minute is a blur. We wrestled for control of the gun, kneeling and punching each other while I desperately held on to the gun as much as I possibly could. Out of the corner of my eye, I see some folks leaving the restaurant. I start yelling, hey, call the police. This guy's trying to rob me. The people run back into the restaurant, and at that moment, I feel myself fall backwards and slam onto the concrete. The guy had managed to trip me, and he loomed over me, gun in hand, looking panicked and angry. He calls me a slur and raises the gun and points it at my forehead. At that moment, I hear yelling and see a group of four to five guys running toward us. The guy is visibly shocked, and instead of shooting, he grabs the gun and swings it hard down on my face. I'm seeing stars. A green van pulls out of a nearby parking spot and screeches next to us. My assailant jumps into the car, and they speed off toward the street. I quickly stand up, my heart racing and blood dripping down my face. I manage to see the license plate and repeat it over and over again as I call 911. The group of guys chase after the car as more people come out of the restaurant to see what the commotion is all about. The police show up, take a report, and investigate the crime scene. I manage to give them a full license plate, a description of the car, and would-be thief. After an hour or so, I'm allowed to leave. I get in my car, start driving toward the bank, and just sob to myself. I still had the money to deliver. I got to go home early that day, but my area director was pissed at me. He thought I should have just given the thief the money. In hindsight, that's probably the reasonable response, but I really thought the guy would just shoot me if I did that. A few months later, detectives came back and informed me that they had found the van and took some guys in for questioning. They had me try to identify the guy and his getaway driver in a photo lineup. At that point, several months had passed, and I'd been smoking pot pretty regularly. I couldn't quite identify them anymore. I let the detectives know that my memory was fuzzy. I was so disappointed in myself since I couldn't do my part to bring these assholes to justice. The experience really changed me as a person. I used to be pretty outgoing, had a reasonable circle of friends, and was very motivated. I became reclusive, distrustful of everyone, and built up a general resentment for people. The experience taught me that you really need to be aware of your surroundings. There are scumbags everywhere. To date, that's probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, it's really easy to armchair quarterback someone's reaction in a fight or flight response. You did what you did, and you're alive to talk about it. Wild story. Should you have given the money? Maybe. Should you have fought back? Maybe. But it all mostly worked out in the end. Hopefully those guys get caught. Whitewater kayaking one day. I was run over by a raft. I couldn't roll my kayak because it was pinned underneath, so I bailed out in the middle of a rapid. The real problem came when I myself got pinned under the raft, and while I was working my way out, someone in the raft tried to rescue me by pulling me up by my feet. Only thing they could see, I guess. This kept me underwater and completely unable to free myself from under the raft for what felt like an eternity. I panicked and kicked really hard a few times, and the person finally released me. Once I popped to the surface, I realized I was maybe five feet from what is called an undercut rock or a sieve. This is where part of a river's current flow under a rock and collects debris. Once you get into one of those, you're pretty much toast. Luckily, I avoided it, but someone had drowned in that very spot two days prior. I was maybe 13 or 14 at the time. Absolutely terrified me. I didn't let it stop me from enjoying the sport, but I definitely stayed far away from rafters from that day on. 
and also kept closer to the rest of my group. Driving through Afghanistan, an older gentleman was kneeling near a pile of rocks. Three to four trucks in the convoy passed him. For some reason, he waited for my Humvee. He looked back at us, adjusted the rocks, and started to sprint for his life. The fear and urgency in his body was a telltale. I yelled, IED! The driver punched it since we were so close. Stopping would have been way worse. The gunner ducked down, in, and I braced for the concussion, and that's when it happened. Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. After five seconds or so of acceleration, we started to get too close to the leading vehicle. The gunner glared at me like, ooh, F you a-hole, and burst out laughing. It was strange to see. I wasn't sure if I thought I was pranking him or if he was just that effed up in the head. War does funny things to you. The VC contacted the CC over the radio to report a possible IED. The CC should have called it in, but not sure if he did. I was tense the rest of the ride. Like, I got to the anus pucker point, and then nothing happens, and my anus just stayed puckered until we arrived and got out. Funny thing, I had a camera mounted on the dash. Later that evening, the whole crew watched the footage with me. We all saw the same thing. This guy was up to no good and was running for his life. The tank commander watched it and just said, F, like it just hit him that we could have all been dead. I'm not sure if the guy was just effing with us or if he failed to set the EID correctly, but in the end, nothing happened. Never heard back about a report or anything, but it was only a moment in my life where I reserved myself that I was truly about to die. Was fly fishing on the East Walker River up in the California-Nevada border one morning. Stopped at the outfitters on the way up and bought some cheap waders. Made my way downstream and came to a bend. The water got a little deep and the current was strong, so made my way to the inside of the bend. Bad idea. Basically ended up in a quicksand type of sediment. Then, to make matters worse, the cheap waders tore a hole right at the bottom of my left leg and started filling with water. So now I'm suctioned into the quicksand and sinking fast. Waders are full of water, no way out. This was all happening in slow motion. I'm now to my waist in quicksand and suctioned in. Fear set in and started to panic. Fortunately, I had a buck knife for cleaning fish in my vest. Busted that out, reached down and cut myself out of the waders. Because the waders were suctioned to the quicksand, it allowed me to escape and pull my legs out. Closest I'd ever been to drowning. Don't ever buy cheap waders. There's a reason the good ones are so expensive. And don't get caught on the inside bend of a river. The sediment is very much like quicksand. A few years ago, I was drinking copious amounts of scotch every night until I could sleep. At the same time, I was randomly taking depression and anxiety meds. When I started adding a random sleeping pill because I was only getting a couple hours of unconsciousness a night, everything changed. Things got extremely bright all the time. I was seeing beautiful and terrifying visions, and my mind was buzzing with thoughts such as high speed I couldn't cope. The only thing that turned everything off seemed to be slamming my head into something until I passed out. The ambulance crew didn't like that at all. Scariest time in my life, and all caused by me. Two years without a drink or pill, August 1st. And life is pretty sweet now. Congrats. I once stayed in a cabin with my two kids and pregnant wife. I had to work and wait on a file to review which was coming from a colleague. So my wife slept in the master suite and the kids slept in the bunkers. They were all asleep by 10.30pm. So, I took the basement bedroom, which had a hardwood floor, old TV, small AC unit, night table with an old alarm clock, and futon. I worked till 12.30ish and passed out right away. I was startled awake when in complete darkness as the foot of my futon was shaken up and down, shaken in the same manner like an angry dad or camp counselor would wake someone up. I said out loud, what the F? And grabbed my phone off the night table, used the light. No one there, and the door was still shut. It was 1.35 a.m. Thought it was odd, and I chalked it up to a dream and went back to sleep. Then, the exact same thing happened again at 3.30 a.m. I looked around, nothing on the floor, the AC unit was off, and nothing on or in the main room, the basement, that would cause the floor to vibrate enough to make the bed shake like that. I figure, maybe it was a dream, or a sleep paralysis thing, and fell back asleep. Thought nothing of it. Never found an explanation, and just to be sure, I never slept in that cabin's basement again. The day before my daughter's second birthday, we booked to visit a waterfall on Koh Samai. The off-road truck ride halfway up the mountain was great fun, then we had to walk the rest of the way. 
The track to the top was fairly steep beside a gentle slope ending in a sheer cliff face. I picked my daughter up and walked with my wife, her sister, my brother-in-law, and their six-year-old boy to find the waterfall. After a hundred yards or so, I slipped and fell, my daughter in my arms, and began to slide towards the cliff. Time acts differently on occasions such as these. I can remember thinking, make sure her head is safe. Grab onto something. There's nothing to grab. Dig your fingers into the dirt. I'm not stopping. Try to land on your back so she can survive the fall. Shit, I can't stop. Then, right at the edge of the cliff, and it was really high, I managed to jam my foot into the roots of a bush. By this time, my wife and brother-in-law had scrambled down to me. I handed my daughter, who was still going wee, up to them, watched them get her to safety, then lit a cigarette and stayed in my bush. <laughs> I must have smoked five cigarettes before I moved and remained silent for most of the rest of the day. It was so close, no more than an inch or two, and a bush, to killing the both of us. Normally, I can make a funny story out of most things. This makes me silent whenever I think about it. A really scary story right there, but I love the innocence of your daughter that was just thinking she was along for a fun ride with daddy. Great job, and I'm very glad that worked out. Scary. This might not be the fear others are talking about, but uh, here goes. I had a friend who was hit by his dad, light spanking for cussing at him. I then, in the stupid, proud, young boy way, showed off by telling him on how all the ways my mom punished me. I tried talking to her when she was watching the news, so she grabbed me by the hair and threw me, and I was marching in front of her like a soldier, even though she really didn't want me to be one, so she hit me with a baseball bat. He looked so shocked and explained to me that those stories didn't sound right, and that violence shouldn't be common by parents and only used as a punishment, not just because she was mad. I was truly scared when he said that my mom was in the wrong, because it meant I was an outlier, that I was in an abnormal life and had nothing to do except destroy it fully or continue with the violence. I don't think I could swallow my saliva for the rest of the day. I was just reliving my whole life thinking, it's not that bad, right? And crying as I realized how scary and torturous everything was. It's just like it all clicked at once. I was about 17 years old, living in the basement of my mother's house. My room was connected to a bathroom, which had another door that led to the basement's living room. My family and I had sightings of what appeared to be black silhouettes of a young girl, maybe 7 to 10 years old. The first time I saw her, I was opening the door into our basement, and once it was open, she ran at me full force, as if she were trying to tackle me. My mother saw her descending the stairs to the basement when she got up to grab some water late at night. My best friend saw her walking along the second floor above our living room. None of us had ever talked about what we had seen with each other before, and we had seen her. Each experience was unique, and couldn't have been influenced by another story. It had been a few months since our last sighting. Me and my buddy would joke about how she lived in the crawl space under the stairs. We'd prank each other by opening the crawl space door and be like, ooh, it was the ghost, ooh. It was New Year's Eve 2009. I invited a bunch of my friends over to party. The rest of my family was gone and we were attending other New Year's parties elsewhere. Me and my friends were sang and danced and had a blast just hanging out. We recorded ourselves doing some classic metal headbanging, you know, where you swing your long hair around in a circle motion. At about three something, started shaking the hell out of the bathroom door, which led to the living room. At the time, I had thought someone had broken into my family's home. My friends were all terrified by the concept, so, as host, I grabbed my knife and burst through the bathroom door. The lights that I had intentionally left on in the living room were now all off, the entire basement was pitch black except for one light. The crawl space door was ajar and was the only light which was turned on. The moment I saw the crawl space door open, I knew it was a message from the shadow girl. My stomach sunk lower than it has ever sunk. The overwhelming terror I felt is almost indescribable. Honestly, I kind of wish it was a burglar. That would have been easier to process. I thought maybe one of my asshole friends caught wind of the pranks. Me and my buddy pulled on each other and thought this would be a funny way to spook us. Thing is, we recorded ourselves headbanging. The timestamp was around 2.40. At no point between 2.40 and 3 had anyone left the room, or even entered the bathroom. In the footage, you can clearly see light emanating from under the bedroom and bathroom doors. I am an unapologetic atheist. What I experienced that night, I cannot explain. I've struggled with this memory for years, trying to rationalize what had happened. I don't think I'll ever know the truth of it all. 
Not scary as much as freaky. When I was seven years old, I rode the bus to school just like any other day. But today, when we got to school, all of the faculty are telling us there's no school today and to all get back on the bus and to go home. As a young kid, I'm thinking, wow, this is awesome. It's not even snowing out. I was used to snow days growing up in New York, but it was September and the snow hadn't started this year. When I got home from the bus, my mom quickly collected my brother and I and gave us strict instructions not to use the TV and my dad would be home shortly. This day is weird. I have no school and my dad doesn't have work. Even my young self can put together that today is a very odd day. Once my dad gets home, they sit us down and tell us that very bad men have attacked our country and this is something that my seven-year-old brain simply could not comprehend. To get away from the chaos of the day, we took to a drive to the beach and on the way, we exited a tunnel and the sky was black like Mordor black. My dad is a surfer from California and was told by a friend that there is a nice wave that breaks on this particular beach. My brother, dad, and I watched the helicopters as smoke and the sun was setting. Little did I know, my country would never be the same again. Two kids in my class lost their parents that day. The friend of my dad that told him about this specific beach was covering a shift for a co-worker on the towers that day so he could go golfing. He lost his life that day. When I was a child, I was in a movie theater with my family. My oldest brother leans past me and tells my mom there's something going on with my other brother. Next thing I know, my mom is yelling for help and someone to call 911. A bunch of people come running over to help us and carry him out of the theater. I'm hysterical at this point. I remember an older gentleman comforting me by telling me everything will be fine. Before paramedics arrived, people were arguing on what to do with him. Turn him over, but something's in his mouth. Hold him down. Long story short, he'd had a massive seizure and was later diagnosed with epilepsy. Years after that, my family refused to go to the movies because we were all traumatized. I don't think any of us had heard of epilepsy before this. My mom thought he was dying that day. I think the events of that day are some of the reasons I have anxiety and panic attacks. It's been about 17 years since this happened, and I'm still a little uncomfortable going into movie theaters. If my brother is there, then I'll have a panic attack before the movie starts. My brother is happy and healthy now, and on medication that works for him, the first few years after his first seizure were really difficult and touch and go for him, but he powered through. I know this isn't as scary as half the stuff on this thread, but it was a pretty traumatic experience for my whole family. I will never forget. When I was about 12, my dad dropped me and a friend off at a small lake to go fishing all day while he went to work. I probably did this two to three times a week during the summer. We had a small boat with all of our gear and a big cooler with water and food. About 2 p.m., a storm started brewing, so we decided to head back to the dock. By the time we got to the dock, it was raining pretty heavy. We found a tree and hunkered down to wait out the storm. It started getting pretty bad, and then we started hearing the tornado sirens going off. We had nowhere to go, so we climbed underneath the highway in a drainage ditch. Well, every other living creature out there had the same idea. Mice, spiders, a rabbit, and I'm pretty sure a family of raccoons were also hunkering down in there. We just sat there until the storm passed. I don't know if there was a tornado or not, but my dad picked us up about 20 minutes later. There for a bit, I thought we were about to die in a tornado. Super scary. <laughs>